Hey everybody, here's um, the second excerpt uh from Cantor with Cress Take the Reins by Jessica Burkhart. I'm gonna be reading just from chapter one. Okay. Chapter one. Our fantabulous entrance. Nod. My parents' SUV rolled into the school's parking lot past the imposing ivy covered wrought iron gates. I had seven types of lip gloss in my purse and not one was Cantor Crest Canterwood Crest Academy worthy. Peach and lime, too summery. Marshmallow and sugar cookie, too Christmassy. Reluctantly, I settled on strawberry. Mom, I whispered, dabbing gloss on my lower lip. Desperate situations really amp up my lip gloss addiction. Are you sure about this? The rearview mirror caught my reflection. My naturally tanned face was pale, and I had slathered on so many coats of lip gloss, my lips had turned cotton candy pink. Oops. You're going to be fine, Sasha. You were a great writer at Briar Creek. Mom turned in her seat to look at me. She tucked a strand of golden brown hair, the same color as mine, behind her ear. I waved my hand toward the window. This is not Briar Creek, I said. I'll be lucky if I make the beginner team here. You're an excellent writer, Dad said, pulling into a parking space and cutting the, edgi the engine. Don't even talk like that. Parents are required to say stuff like that so they don't, seem, so they don't ruin their kids' self-esteem. I've seen an Oprah about it. I tried one of those deep breathing exercises from my yoga DVD. In May, when my acceptance letter had come from school, I'd taken up yoga. The thought of switching schools and writing for a new stable had been enough to give me major stress. But I couldn't do any worse here than I had at UMS, Union Middle School, in my hometown of Union. Maybe I'd, be, maybe I'd make real friends here. Breathe in, and then out. In, out. All right, Sosh, Dad said. Let's go. Reluctantly, I opened the door and took in the scene around me. Everything looked different, bigger somehow, than when I toured the campus in April. Beautiful stone buildings with climbing ivory, rolling green hills, lush trees with not one dead leaf to be found. And best of all, a gorgeous, dark lake lacquered stable ahead in the distance. Smile, say hi to Grandma and Grandpa, honey, Dad said, shoving his camcorder in my face. This is Sasha's first day of seventh grade. Wave to the camera, Sasha. Dad, I hiss. Oprah would so totally disapprove of this. I reverted to my yoga breathing. In, out, in, out. He beamed. Sasha's first day at boarding school. I remember when, oh my god. Dad, stop filming. I slammed my palm over the lens. Not now. Oh, Dad lowered the camcorder and switched off the blinking red light. Sorry. Mom read the instruction sheet for students coming to school with horses. It says to unload your horse in this lot, Mom said, and follow the signs to the stable area. At least there were signs, since I probably wouldn't remember the way after five months. Dad put away the camcorder and helped me unload my horse. Charm pawed the trailer floor, eager to get out. He had been in the trailer for two hours. Charm, with nostrils flaring, backed down the trailer ramp. Please behave, I whispered to him. He pranced in place and huffed as, his, as he eyed his new home. His chestnut coat glistened, his gold hearth halter rings flashing in the sunlight. Charm was acting like a yearling instead of an eight-year-old gelding. I touched the tiny silver horse charm on the bracelet my parents had given me for good luck last night, our last night together before Cannerwood. We'll go park the trailer and find you in the stable when we're done, Mom said. You're leaving me alone? Oh, honey, Mom said, squeezing my shoulder. You'll be fine, and we'll be right back. Promise? I asked. She found it. Promise. My slick hands could barely grip charm's lead line. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Ready, boy? My lips felt dry. I dug in my pocket for my strawberry gloss and globbed more on. Together, Charm and I followed a sign that read stable, with an arrow that pointed down a grassy path. Iron signs directed riders to cross-country courses and tra trail riding paths. As we approached the stable, the familiar scent of horses, hay, and grain soothed me more than my breathing exercises or lip gloss ever could. Wow, Canterwood is even more go gorgeous than I'd remembered, I thought, surveying the gleaming paddock. The lush grass looked as if someone had cut it with fingernail clippers. There wasn't a clump of horsehair or a wisp of hay out of place. Even the stones around the bushes by the sidewalks looked polished. This place made Briar Creek look like a dollhouse-sized operation. I still couldn't believe I'd been accepted to Canterwood and was about to start writing for their nat nationally recognized writing program. Charm took me forward. Easy, I murmured. Just then a boom came from the parking lot. At the same moment that I realized that it had just been a car backfiring, my hand shot out to grasp Charm's, Charm's halter. With a snort, he reared up toward the bright blue sky. The lead line seared my palms as it slipped out of my hands. I stumbled backward and made a frantic swipe for the end of the rope. 
the charm bolted forward before I could grab it. Oh my god, this couldn't be happening. In the distance, I could see Charm's lead line dangling between his legs. He could seriously hurt himself if he got tangled in the rope. Charm! I yelled, sprinting after him. He galloped toward the cluster of students and then swerved to avoid them. He flew by the paddocks and headed for the arena, his hooves pounding the ground in quick beats. Loose horse! I screamed. Charm's ears swept back in fear. The whites of his eyes were visible, even from far away. Charm quickened his pace into a flat gallop. Thirteen hundred pounds of glistening chestnut zoomed around the grass. Here, Charm, he slowed to a fa fast canter and turned toward a much darker chestnut thoroughbred in the arena. The horse's shoulder muscles rippled under his shiny coat. A slight girl with blonde hair that peeked out from beneath a black velvet riding helmet was riding a thoroughbred. Watch out, I yelled to the girl, but if she had heard me, but if she heard me, she didn't show it. Charm flew past the thoroughbred and knocked over a row of orange cones lined up on the outside of the arena. A cone tumbled right into the thoroughbred's path. He reared and stretched high into the air. For a second, it looked like he would tip backward onto the girl. My breath caught. All I could do was stare. The girl flipped off her horse's back and landed in the arena dirt. 